Wizathir Harley, it's hard to add winner, and welcome to English with Add Winner. Today we're going to be talking about our fourth Old English morphology video, which is adjectives, adjective endings. So, Old English is a Germanic language, and Germanic adjectives are weird. They have two declensions. They have the strong and weak declensions. It's the traditional name. It's based on the endings. They're similar to, but not identical with the strong and weak nouns. So, that's why they called them that, the Brothers Grimm and all that. But a better, more functional name is indefinite and definite. And the reason for that, um, as we'll be getting on to, so the original usage of the indefinite and definite inflections. So originally in Old Germanic, in the earliest stage, there was no word the. There was no way to say the man. You would just say man. But if you had an adjective, the ending would show the difference between a good king and the good king. Um, which, so I've asked someone who knows a bit more about that than me to tell me how to say that in that. Here it's uh, Godas Kuningas and Godo Kuningas. And I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it's a reconstructed language anyway, so who cares? Uh, so we could still write like that in poetry. So from Beowulf, there is weed on reaches, der on swerde. So weed on reaches means it's the genitive of the wide kingdom, and der on swerde is the dative of the dear sword. So we've got weed on reaches instead of fast weed on reaches, which means the same thing, but has the word the, or weedes reaches, which would mean a wide kingdom in the genitive. This wasn't common in prose though, so you don't have to think about doing it that way. That's just kind of a poetic thing. The new rule for use of the definite adjectives, and I say new in quotes because Old English is a thousand years old, but the new rule derives from that. Basically, when we started using the word the, we kept using the definite endings, so they kind of became linked. So the first time, the first place that you would use the weak forms is with the definite article the, and the demonstrative that, which are both the same word se, and also this, which is this. So our examples here are se we zalaro, which means the wise teacher. Um, and here's an example. Here's another example. This one's with this. So bethusere onward on tide at this present time, and that's from Alfric. Uh, Alfric was late West Saxon, so he has some spellings that I wouldn't use, but that's how he spelled it, so I'm not going to change it. The next place that you would use the definite form is with possessives, so those are my, your, his, her, its, our two, y'all twos, our, y'alls, their, in Old English, mean, thin, his, hire, his, unker, inker, ure, ewer, hera. So, Here's an example of that. Birchnes blid an drichnes ures. The brightness of our gentle lord. And that's from the Paris Psalter, which is poetic. So it's in a bit of a weird order there, which is why I've glossed it. So, brightness, gentle lord's hour. <laughs> so it's a bit confusing, but that's what it means. Um, you could, of course, put ures right after birchnes, and then it would be a bit more normal. The next place that the definite form is used is after you or y'all, so in Old English, tu and ye, in addressing someone. So here's an example from Alfred. Allah ye un ye witful on galatai. O oh, you foolish Galatians. And it's important to note that only directly after. Um, so the example that I've given for that is from Alfred again. So tu uvela theowa on slack. So you'll notice that uvela has the definite ending, uvela, but then slack doesn't have the ending because it is removed from the thu. If you'd like more information on that, um, you can go to Old English Syntax by Mitchell. That's where I got this information. So the indefinite endings are similar to the strong noun endings. They're used everywhere, not mentioned in the previous slides. If you just want to say a good man, that would be goldware, simple indefinite endings. So the masculine is similar to the stan declension. So the nominative singular is nothing. The genitive is s. The instrumental is a. Now the instrumental 
is rare and only used in poetry, and it's only distinct from the dative in the adjectives for the singular indefinite for masculine and neuter. For every other form, including the nouns themselves, it's identical with the dative. So that's the instrumental. The dative has um, the accusative has ne. And in the plural, the nominative has e. The genitive has ra. The instrumental and dative both have um, and the accusative has e. So notice the similarities and notice the differences with the ston declension. So the differences, which I've written out explicitly here, are gratum stane, which is dative singular. So we have gratum, but stane. Um, similarly, we have gratne stan, which is accusative singular, and gratne stan. Uh, in the nominative accusative plural, we have grate stanas. So grate stanas. And in the genitive plural, we have gratra stana. So gratra stana. And the word grat is great as in large, like the greatest foe I've ever encountered, or the great sea, or the great white shark. It doesn't mean great like fantastic. It's spelt like that, but it means large. The feminine is similar to the sorhivu declension. So the nominative singular is nothing or u, the genitive is re, the dative is also re, and of course the instrumental is then also re, the accusative is e. The plural nominative is e, the genitive is ra, the dative is um, and the accusative is e. And again, notice the similarities and differences. The differences are the dative genitive singular, gra tre sorge, so, gra tre sorge, and again the genitive plural, gra tra sorga, gra tra sorga. And the nominative accusative plural of adjectives is also slightly different because it has to be e, you cannot say a. So you can say either gra te sorga or gra te sorge, but you cannot say gra ta sorga. That's wrong. The neuter is similar to the ship shap declensions. Again, notice the similarities and differences. The nominative singular is nothing. The genitive is es. The instrumental is e. The dative is um. And the accusative is nothing. The plural is nothing or u, plural nominative. The genitive is ra. The instrumental and dative are um. And the accusative is nothing or u. And this is the most similar between the adjectives and the nouns, to the nouns, the only difference is the genitive plural, gratra shipa. Gratra shipa. So, and you'll notice that the genitive plural and dative plural are the same for all three genders, just like in the nouns. Ra um. There are some variants, thankfully much less of this than in nouns. There's basically three different variants that you kind of have to look out for. Uh, there's a adjectives, such as suete, which means sweet. Um, so in the masculine and neuter nominative accusative, it has an e on the end, um, which makes it pretty easy to see because that's usually the form that's listed in the dictionary. And for the feminine nominative singular and the neuter nominative accusative plural, those forms that are marked nothing or u, it has the u. Uh, this is similar to nouns like riche because it comes basically from the same phenomenon. Uh, very similarly, we have W adjectives, like yaru, which has a W before any ending with a vowel, u otherwise. And this is, again, very similar to the W nouns, like baru, baruwes, baruwe, etc., etc., because it comes from the same kind of process. And the a adjectives, such as black, which means, well, black. Um, so in these, a becomes a ah, before any ending that starts with the vowel. So there's something similar that happens with some nouns like dai, uh, dogos, but it's a bit more complicated in nouns and that's why I didn't like draw a direct parallel. In adjectives it's pretty simple. If the ending starts with a vowel, the a ah turns into an a. Ah. So black, blocku, bloke, bloka, 
black net, black raw. So the definite endings, which are the ones that you again use in those cases that I talked about, like after the word the, after my, his, etc. When you're like saying you crazy man, those endings are similar to the end noun endings and are kind of variant adjectives. So e adjectives, nothing special happens. You just put the endings on, get rid of the e. They just look normal. W adjectives just have the W in all the forms because all the endings start with vowels. And similarly, our A adjectives have A in all the definite forms. So it's pretty easy. There's no like variance. It's, it's a lot easier. So our masculine, we have nominative singular A, genitive on, dative on, accusative on, plural on, genitive in A, dative um, accusative on. And in the feminine, we have Nominative singular a, genitive on, dative on, accusative on, plural on, genitive in a, dative um, accusative on. And finally, in the neuter, we have nominative accusative singular a, genitive on, dative on, plural nominative accusative on, genitive in a, dative um. Now, I feel like I've said this all before. Uh, did you notice why I feel like I've said this all before? Because the reason is that when I said that these are similar to the end noun endings, that was a bit of an understatement. They're actually identical. Uh, so that's easy. <laughs> so that's something you don't have to memorize. Just remember it's identical and you'll be good. So this next slide, these next two slides are just all the endings applied to black. So you can see like all the forms. I'll just let you look at that, pause, take it all in. <laughs> I've already gone over all these endings and why the A ah turns to AW, ah, so you can just see it in practice here. So yeah, thanks for watching. The next video will be about verbs and soon I'll be done with these kind of just going through endings. And then I can start doing like some readings or maybe like some simple explanations of what the cases are. Something like that. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been Englishman Alwina, where you say with the slaughter.